What's up everybody? Thanks for checking out Ozark Overland Adventures. Today we're going to take a look at both Gaia GPS and Onyx Off-Road and see which one is the best off-road overlanding navigation app. First of all, let me start by saying I've been using Gaia GPS for years. I know it like the back of my hand. I'm familiar with it. I teach classes on it. Um, I know Gaia very well. Onyx, admittedly, I'm new to. Uh, I have been checking it out for the last month, uploading files, recording tracks, uh, all that good stuff, and think I have a really good understanding of it. Both of these will get the job done. If you are looking for an app or a system to plan and organize your routes, keep track of where you've been, drop waypoints, share files with each other, both of these will do that, but they do do it in different ways and each does have some pretty significant pros and cons to each other and we'll get into that. But just to address the common things, they will both show the motor vehicle use maps for the MVUM. They do it in different ways. Onyx highlights every trail on the motor vehicle use map in green. So when you take a look at it, it's really easy to see. It just kind of pops. Gaia GPS with a premium subscription has an MVUM overlay or an MVUM layer that you have to turn on. And that is what you see all these bigger lines here along the map. On Onyx off-road, they're just on. You can't turn them off. They're just, they're always there. The second thing, they will both show public tracks. Onyx uh, has a little feature called Discover, and it will show public tracks um, with quite a bit of detail. Guide GPS, you have to go into your layers and your map overlays and turn on public tracks. And you can see them populating right there. There are all these ones that are coming up in green and you can click on them and get more details. But they will both show public tracks. Onyx will show public tracks in both the web browser and the mobile app, whereas Guide GPS, you can only find the public tracks when you're in the web browser or kind of you know, pre-planning at home. They both have offline maps, which is super key to making either one of these functional when we're out overlanding, off-roading in national forest where there's most likely no cell phone signal because, I mean, that's why we go, right? To get away. And they both do that in a very different way, and I'll get into that in a minute. They both record your tracks. They both record waypoints. They both let you set, you know, custom icons and that sort of thing. And they both have this system where they have an app and a web browser interface so that you can maybe pre-plan at home on your computer and then use your tablet or phone um, when you're out on the trail and sync between the two devices. Both are super handy that way. So let me just kind of get down into the interface of each one and kind of compare and contrast some of the things. I'm going to primarily be using the web browser interface because that is the most um, feature rich for both of them. But I'll also show you some things on the app interface and for that I'm using my wife's uh, iPad Pro, um, just because the screen's larger and it fits better in this video as opposed to using a little cell phone screen that I have to zoom in or, you know, you have to squint to see the details. So I'm going to use the iPad interface is basically the same for both. So let's dive in. When you open Onyx, this is what you are greeted with. Uh, we are looking at the Ozark National Forest. If you're familiar with this channel, Ozarks is my backyard. That's where I spend most of my time wheeling, um, but we can zoom way out on the map and if we wanted to, we could um, zip on over here to New Mexico or Colorado and take a look there. Onyx has three maps. You have a topographic map. You have a hybrid map, which shows typography and satellite imagery combined. If you zoom in here, um, here to the Gunnison National Forest, you can see the topo lines there overlaid on top of the satellite imagery, or we can just go satellite imagery. 
And it's pretty nice satellite imagery, I gotta say. Um, that looks nice and detailed and looks really good. Um, but for the most part, I like to use the topographic images. Let's zoom back over here to the Ozarks. This is the only view you get with Onyx. You get the base map, which is one of the three, and then overlaid on top of that, you get green shading for national forests. You get purple shading for, this is a national river. Blue shading like this is wildlife areas, wildlife preserves, wildlife refuges, um, that sort of thing. Um, you can see wilderness boundaries located in here. You also see these blue lines here, and those are public tracks, and that makes it super easy to find those um, in Onyx off-road. Uh, let's zoom back over here to the an area that's got a ton of public tracks. If we get into a place like Colorado, uh, boom. I mean, you can see all these public tracks here in Onyx. And you can just click on one of them. Uh, Aspen Mountain, Richland Hill. It even rates them difficulty. gives you a time uh, to run it, how far it is, what the high point is, the type of vehicles that's... Uh, good for it, gives you an overview, gives you photos, details about the trail. This is one area where Onyx really shines, and I do like this feature of Onyx Off-Road. You can see all this area here, you can go here to the Discover tab, and boom, you get a lot of options based on where we are. And that's super handy for finding trails and getting more information about them. Um, and that is a big plus, and one of the big things that people love about Onyx Off-Road. Then over here you have my content. This is where you can turn things on and off. Gaia GPS refers to lines as routes. Um, in Onyx, it is called lines, and this is your pre, kind of your pre-planned routing, your, your pre-planned trips that you wanna check out. You can toggle those on and off. You can see I've got some that I've uploaded. You can toggle waypoints on and off. You can toggle tracks that you've recorded on and off, you see the blue lines popping up over here, that's one of them. And from here you can import and you can export um, any or all of those. You can click on the plus sign and you get a breakdown of uh, everything that's in there. So I can toggle off my 2020 bonfire run trips. I can toggle off uh, my high watermark file. I can, those are over in Colorado. So that's not going to do any good here. Um, and waypoints, I can toggle these on and off. So there's uh, that campsite right there. I can toggle it on and off. I can, and then I can also do the same with tracks. So this is a lot of Colorado stuff that I've got loaded. Um, here's high watermark trail that I ran. And so you can toggle those on and off. And here's where you can import files. Select the file from your computer, run it, um, upload it, and you can export files by this. And you can select what you want to export. If I've got uh, all these things toggled on, then I'm going to get all of them exported. Um, I have to go in and turn off and on what all I want to export as a GPX file or a KML file to share with somebody. Over here, we've got our offline maps, and you can see these uh, green highlighted areas. These are areas that I've already got downloaded, and then you've got a help setting. Up here at the top, we've got our tools. So line distance, this is where you kind of pre-make a route, and all you do is click on line distance. You can give it a name, test, you have two options, a free draw or a click to draw. Free draw, you can do just that. You can just loosely take your mouse and go around an area like that. Undo that. Click to draw, just draw a straight line. So we want to start there, go there, go there, go there, go there, go there. You get the idea. And I can quickly... And boom, and then I can save it. And so there's my test, and I can go back now to my content, go to lines, and here's test. And I can toggle it on and off. Over here you have area shape. Um, 
This is where you can highlight a certain area. Um, I honestly haven't figured out why that would be useful. But uh, I'm sure it is. But I haven't been able to figure out why. Drawing an area shape is, is helpful. And so there you go. And then I can click on that and you know, move that around and reshape my area. Um, I'm going to do all that because I don't want to save it. And there we go. And then I can add a waypoint and move it around. Give it a name. Steep hill. And recently used icons. You get more. I love the vast number and detail of the icons that Onyx has. So here's the one for Steep Hill, and I think it's fantastic. Uh, Onyx puts a lot of detail into their icons, and I think they're I think they're great. So we'll save that. And uh, that's pretty much it. You've got the icon here to zoom in on location, and then you've got plus or minus buttons to zoom in and out of the map. They do have a 3D beta version. That's kind of cool. Um, I played with it a little bit, um, but uh, it's still in beta form, but it, it does give you a 3D terrain. Um, that's really it. I mean, that's the one thing about Onyx is it is simple. So let's flip over here to Gaia and I'll walk you through the same area. The powerful thing about Gaia GPS is its vast amount of maps. Whereas Onyx only has three, the Topo, the Hybrid, and the Satellite, Gaia GPS has hundreds of maps and map options. And you can build and customize your maps and your look the way you want to. And I've got tutorial videos on that um, and, and how to do that. So I'm not gonna get into it here. Just real quickly, you can see here, I'm using the Gaia Topo as my base layer, the US Forest Service Classic Map as my uh, primary map for the Forest Service areas. I do have a shaded relief overlay turned on to really make the, the topo lines pop. I've got public land that I can access and see very quickly what's public and what's private. And then I have the motor vehicle use map, the MVUM overlay turned on so I can see all the legal forest service trails. Uh, let's get rid of that. And as far as its interface, you can see this is very uncluttered um, initially. Same thing, plus minus. Uh, location indicator, uh, submenus over here to access your layers and add and move, add and uh, remove maps and adjust their transparency, which is super powerful. Here's where you can toggle on all your waypoints and your routes and your tracks. Uh, and you can see I've got a bunch. And over here, you've got an icon for your saved items. You've got your preferences. You can print maps from Gaia. You've got create waypoints, create a route, create an area, and you can import data from right here. So if you've got a GPX file you want to upload, you can do it from right here. And then over here in this menu, you can immediately go to all of your um, different individual stuff. Like I can go to a category and I can see all of my tracks, uh, hikes. You can see different maps I've got downloaded. So here's where you can see all the different uh, folders that I've got, the GOAT, the Green County, Oklahoma um, Adventure Trail, the Ozark Overland Adventure Trail, Colorado 2020, all of my folders are there, which makes it super handy. And then I can go into, you know, uploading and all different stuff. So this is where I can really get in detail and organize all of my stuff. Switching over to the app, um, very similar to the web browser over here in Onyx Off-Road, we've got the toggle here for the different map types. It was on Topo, there's Hybrid, there's Satellite View, and now we're back to Topo. Here's where you can pinpoint your current location. And a cool thing I like about Onyx is it will give you the weather. And I just really like that. If you click on it, um, any location, but you can, you can quickly get the weather if you've got uh, internet access there. I think that's really cool. And down here are the main menu things, discover, nearby trails, offline maps, if you've got any, I don't have any loaded on the tablet, um, my content, and 
map tools, this is where I can do the lines, do the shapes, add a photo, add a waypoint, mark my location. And then this is where you toggle to start recording your routes. If we switch over to, if we switch over to Gaia GPS, we get a lot more info here in the Gaia app compared to what we had in the web browser. Um, this is very customized to being on a mobile device and knowing that this is where you're going to be recording things. And so you get a lot of information here as you're moving, as you're looking at, uh, you know, as you're recording a track, uh, you can see that your elevation, your speed, how much elevation you've ascended, you can, your actual location, what your sunrise and sunset times are for that area. Uh, here's where you can record, hit the record button and record your track. Here's where you can upload a photo in your course and all of this, if you click up there, all of this is totally customizable. So you can make this look however you want to. Uh, here's the button that uh, pins points your location. You can search. Here's where you can record a track. You can add a waypoint, create a route, download your maps, take a picture, import file here. Here's your layers menu. You can see I've got the same layers here that I did on the uh, computer and all the other layers that I can't. And then here's where I can toggle and bring up even more things down here. My saved items, I can search all of my, do all, I can search all of my routes. I can search all of my um, tracks. I can toggle them on and off for visibility. And just have a lot of different uh, areas. I go over this in a lot more detail in some of my other videos about Gaia, but I'm just giving you a quick overview of what all you can do here in the app. There's a lot. So there's a quick overview. So let's talk about the pros and cons of each. With Onyx Off-Road, for the pros, first of all, it is super simple. And that is what people really like about Onyx Off-Road, is just how simple the interface is. I mean, they don't give you a lot of options, uh, but you know, you got three map choices, you got your uh, trails highlighted in green, you got a few things you can do as far as creating a route. That's it. Um, so it is super simple, and some people just really like that. Second, the MVUM trails, the Forest Service trails, they are super easy to see. I mean, you can see the, um, the green lines here. That does make it easy. The public trails, they're easy to see. Um, and they got a lot of great info. So if I click on this one over here uh, in the Ozarks, Little Piney Creek, Union Schoolhouse, um, you know, you just, it's highlighted in blue, so it's easy to find on the map. You get information about it and photos, little information about the trail. That's super awesome. And that's uh, super handy. And, and one of the biggest pluses, I think, about Onyx Off-Road, especially if you're out west or in areas where there are a lot of um, public tracks like that, makes it super easy to find them. So good job there, Onyx. And I know they've been putting a lot of work into curating that content and putting that stuff out there. Um, and guy hasn't been doing that. So definitely a big plus for Onyx there. Um, I love the fact that if you're in the app that it will give you weather for an area. You just click on it and you know here's what the weather currently is. And you can even click here and see the full forecast. So there's today, Tuesday, Thursday, we got rain coming. Um, good weekend. So, but uh, man, cold weekend. Uh, so I love the fact that you can get uh, you know weather forecasts like that. And I just think the, the icons for waypoints are so much better. Um, you know, go here to the map tools and adding a waypoint. Um, gosh, I just uh, can I pull it up? There we go. I just think these icons are fantastic. Uh, you know, mud pit, Jeep, I don't know what kennels, off-road vehicle, gro mark where grocery store is, houses, lookouts, dirt bikes, great spot to air up and down. I mean, there's just a lot of great detail in these icons, and I love it. Um, I think that's fantastic. Let's get into the cons of Onyx. First of all, the maps are seriously limited. I mean, you've only got three maps. you got a topo, you've got a hybrid, and you've got the satellite view. you got the trails, which you can't turn on and off. The detail level is not real clear the way they have the colors overlaid and you can't toggle any of that on and off. It just, it just is what it is. 
and I don't like that. Um, I think that is one of the killers of Onyx to me and why I um, do not like it is that the maps are just so limited. Offline maps, Royal Pain. To do that, you go to Offline Maps, click on New Map, and you're greeted with this little box. And you've got three options. You can go five miles wide at high resolution, you can go 10 miles wide at medium resolution, or you can jump all the way to 150 miles wide and get low resolution. Um, so, you know, 10 miles wide is kind of the sweet spot. That's, that's pretty good detail there to, to find your way around. But to download this entire area that I want where my tracks are, I'll have to download that tile and then probably overlap it and then download that tile and then come get that tile and that tile. And anyway, I think you get the idea. So click on save. After your map is downloaded, Onyx does show you what you have downloaded uh, with this little green box. So, I mean, as you can see, to get this entire area here, it will take one, two, three, at least a dozen of those tiles. And hopefully I, you know, don't accidentally miss an area and get some overlap on there. Um, but it's just not too default. In, in, in Gaia, I can download this select this entire area and just download it in one download and be done with it. And if you are wanting to download entire sections, if you're on a, a 10 day trip like we did to Colorado, you know, I was able to do that in about, uh, you know, three downloads in Gaia. That probably would have taken me 50 or more little tiles to, to get that information for Colorado. And uh, that's just not cool. That's just not okay with me. Uh, the route planning is limited. You've, you've got just simple draw straight lines, you know, draw loose shapes. You can't snap to roads and stuff like you can in Gaia. And uh, I, th I think that's, I think that's a, a big bummer uh, in Onyx. You can only import and export files from the web browser. You can't do anything like that in the app. Um, if you go to my content in the web browser, you have an import. And if you click on a route or something, or if you, you know, click on the lines, you can export them. Um, but you can only do that in the web browser. If you go to my content on here, there's nowhere to there's nowhere to, to import and export from here. You can share, like just you know, send it to an email with a link, but that's that's all you can do. There's no no interacting with GPX files on the mobile the, on the mobile app, and I think that's a huge limitation there. The import file size being limited to two megs. That sucks. Um, I actually tried to upload my Ozark Overland Adventure Trail. It's got tons of waypoints and stuff in it. It's a six meg file. Onyx won't do it. Um, it gave me an error message and said, you're limited to two megs. So if you're an Onyx user and you want to, to you know, use my Ozark Overland Adventure Trail route, uh, I, I, I'm sorry. And I don't have a workaround for you because um, you can't, you're limited to two megs. And finally, and I don't understand this, there's no private land info. I mean, that is a big deal in what was their first app, Onyx Hunt, was all the pub, all the private land info you could get on it. And in in Onyx Off Road, there's there's not any. Um, like I know this area here is is all private. There's a little airfield there, um, but if I click on it, it doesn't it doesn't tell me anything. Um, if I switch over to um where am I? same area there we go um, if i switch over to to gaia and turn on the private lands i mean look i can see that this all belongs to to pamela bird bolded and i know their address and i know there's a second owner james zinn so i can find out this information if i need to to contact a private landowner for whatever reason and the fact that onyx doesn't have that feature in Onyx Off-Road that they do in Onyx Hunt. I, I don't understand because um, I thought that was, a, that was a huge selling point. Let's talk about Gaia. Let's talk about its, uh, its pros and cons. The first pro, Gaia is very powerful. As I've shown you, it does a lot and has a lot that Onyx just does not. Um, and the layer, I mean, just there's just so much Gaia can do that Onyx can't. And I think that's a huge benefit for it. 
Number two, there are tons of map options, hundreds of maps options in Gaia and in Onyx you got three and, and that's it. Um, the layers is a huge feature in Gaia. The fact that I can toggle different layers on and off, I can adjust their opacity, I can totally customize the view that I'm looking at for the area that I want to go to is fantastic. If I want a National Geographic map for the Buffalo National River or Great Sand Dunes National Park out in Colorado, I can have it loaded. If I you know, want the MVM layer, I can have it loaded. I can toggle them on and off if I don't want it cluttering up my screen. And Onyx, I can't do that. I'm limited to, I mean, what they give you is what you get and that's all you got. So, um, so powerful, tons of map layers. The fact that I can organize things in folders is, uh, is huge. So going here to my folders area here, uh, you know, like my Ozark Overland Adventure Trail, it's got five different tracks for the different days. It's got a bunch of campsites loaded up in there. It's got points of interest loaded up in there and it's all contained in one folder. Um, I can't do that in Onyx. And if I wanted to um, share that as a GPX file in Onyx, I would have to just go in and individually toggle a bunch of stuff on and off and get the right mix and then hit export. And that's just, uh, that, that's a pain. And that, that's a, a big bummer, a huge plus for Gaia on that one. Um, I love that you can import and export GPX files in both the web browser and the app. Um, it works both ways. I can click on the plus sign up here and hit uh, import file. And if I had a file loaded, I have a GPX file in there, I could upload it. Um, I can click on, uh, I can go over here to, uh, let's see, my Ozark Overland Adventure Trail folder, and boom, I can export that as a GPX or a KML file. Um, you know, I can do it in the web browser as well. And Onyx, you're limited there to, to only the web browser and then limited in file size. So uh, supporting external GPX KML files, huge plus there for Guy. I love that the MVM overlay actually matches the motor vehicle use maps you would get from the Forest Service. Uh, they look identical, the key is identical. It is an actual overlay of their maps in Gaia. And you know, whereas in Onyx, you've got uh, all the green lines, but uh, you don't really see much else from that. Like I know that this trail here is OHV only and highway legal vehicles aren't allowed on it. And if you zoom in close, you can, whoops, if you zoom in close, I mean, you can see here that that's a broken line and there's something different about it. Uh, but if you're zoomed out like this, you can't really see that well. Same thing with up in this area, this is an OHV only area. Um, so if I go over here to Gaia, I mean, boom, I can instantly tell that's different and those are different because it actually follows it, it is the actual MVM map. So uh, big points to Gaia on that one. Another major plus is the downloading of offline maps. I mean, the fact that I can cover huge areas in Gaia <clears throat> with multiple layers and do it in one swoop, whereas in Onyx, I have to download just a bunch of smaller tiles and hope I don't miss something. Huge plus to Gaia on that one. The private lands info in Gaia, the fact that that is visible, a huge plus there. As far as the cons go for Gaia, the number one con for Gaia is uh, the interface. I mean, it's it's challenging. There's a lot of stuff it can do, and that intimidates some people. So um, that's why I've done the tutorials that I have, and uh, to try to help people with that. But a lot of people get into Gaia and they just get overwhelmed and they shut down and like, nope. And so they switch over to Onyx because it's so simple. So uh, the interface and just how much guy can do is intimidating. Uh, the public tracks only being available in the web browser. I think that's a bummer. That's where Onyx really shines with the public tracks. You can access them in both. They're easy to, to see. And Gaia doesn't spend any time curating that content like Onyx does. Um, everything is user Created. So if I go out and record a track like the Ozark Overland Adventure Trail, and I get to, when I save it, I get to make the decision. Do I want to make this public or do I want to make it private? Um, and there's actually a lot more public tracks in Gaia than there is in Onyx, um, but you can only access them and see them in the web browser, not the mobile device. 
another one going off the tracks. I mean, there's just not a lot of info. It depends on what the people put in there. Um, so, you know, if you don't like the detail that's in the Ozark Overland Adventure tracks, I'm sorry, that's my fault, not Gaia's. Um, you know, if you go up to, up to Colorado and find tracks for Black Bear Pass, you know, whatever info is there is what the people who put it, who made it public uh, did it and not uh, not anything Guy did. So I think that's definitely something Guy could improve upon is to start curating tracks and uh, make it a resource for finding information like that, like, like Onyx has. So I hope this was helpful. I hope this helps you decide where you want to spend your money. Onyx Off-Road offers... Um, a seven day trial, and then after that, it's $30 a year. There's no tiers, there's no options there. Guy GPS, if you want, you can use it for free, but you're very limited in what you can do with it, obviously. You can record tracks, you can upload tracks uh, to it, you can uh, you know, do very basic things with it, but you don't have access to all the maps. There's like three maps. There's a, a topo, a satellite, <laughs> kind of like Onyx, um, and one other but you're not gonna have access to the MVO overlay. You're not gonna have access to um, all the other maps, the weather overlays, the um, National Geographic maps and so forth. So um, for that, you've gotta move up. They've got another a standard subscription, which I think is $20 a year. And then where the real meat of Gaia comes in is with a premium subscription and it's $40 a year. And I think it is 100% worth it, especially when compared to 30 bucks for um, for Onyx, 40 bucks for Gaia sounds like a bargain with what you get. And if you're not currently a premium subscriber for, uh, for Gaia GPS, there's actually a discount code in the description below the video. Um, so which will give you a, a nice little discount for your first year or first five years um, and, and save you some money that way. So anyway, I hope this was, uh, was helpful. I hope that you, uh, you know, I, I hope you found it uh, helpful trying to decide between the two because Onyx is putting a whole lot of marketing dollars into promoting their app. And uh, yeah, they're definitely getting it out there. And I think people are starting to wonder which one's the better one. Hopefully you didn't find this too biased. I, I do have a lot more experience with Gaia than I do with, with Onyx. But uh, anyway, if you, if you have any other questions, put them in the comments below. I do consider myself uh, very knowledgeable about Gaia. I consider myself somewhat knowledgeable about Onyx, but I'll be glad to, to answer any questions you have. And if I don't know, I'll, I'll at least try to find out for you. Um, uh, if you would hit like on the video so that YouTube knows that you liked it, it helps us, you know, with the algorithm and getting the video out there to more people. If you would subscribe to the channel, if you're not already, um, I like doing stuff like this, gear reviews, walk arounds, uh, hopefully lots more trip videos coming up in 2021. So we appreciate your support in that. But uh, thanks so much for watching and you guys have a great day. Bye.